Let's get my next guest right out of here. He is a fabulous comedian, whether on stage or on screen. It is the very funny Mr. Wamesh Wanganathan. <laughs> It's uh, good to have Ramesh here. I, yes. I, I think you're just a delight on TV. I love watching you. I love hearing you do comedy. You are, of course, a vegan. Yes, I sort of... Uh, I've, I've been on here for about ten seconds. I should mention it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm asking, so I know you've been filming away a lot. You've done a lot of travel shows. I know you went to Albania, which is... Uh, Ooh, uh, I did. I went to Albania. I got a tattoo. I got the Albanian flag. Oh, I got exactly the same one. On really? my arm. Yeah. Yes. But it's a double-headed... The old double-headed Yeah, it's our eagle. eagle. That's so crazy that you got that. I know, I know. Uh, yeah, a mistake. Um, <laughs> uh, I was just in this bunker. Yeah. They've got loads of bunkers in Albania. Yeah. And this artist had bought this bunker yeah. and he was like doing pictures and stuff. So that's we... a hangover from the Cold War, I guess. Yes, the yeah. Like, so all those bunkers, so some of the bunkers are just sitting empty, but some of them they've turned them into cafes and stuff. And some of them they've used to intimidate British comedians into getting tattoos. <laughs> um, but, um, so we just walked into this thing and he was showing us his pictures and all these pictures are insane, like Satan and. Stuff like that. And then he said, I also do tattoo. <laughs> That's how he do. And he went, you want? And I just thought, uh, yeah. So I just, I just... So I just got this done. So yeah. when you get home, how did you explain that to your wife? Did you... Well, she has got very little interest in my physical appearance. So, <laughs> so she... Uh, I've got to be honest with you, I just got married for immigration. Yeah. So, so <laughs> uh, Not me, she's Polish. Yeah. No, I'm, joking. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh, she is, she is why I'm saying that... Because it's essential, I'm not showing off, but she is. Yeah. Um, and it is, <laughs> it is as magical as I was promised, do you yeah. know what I mean? They just <laughs> smell different, feel different, it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, Ramesh, you'll be feel to know, uh, I mean, he's, he's working flat out at the moment, loads of shows, loads of great shows, but you've got a book out, and the book is a very funny book called Straight Outta Crawley. That's a reference to Straight Outta Compton. Correct, yes. Of course, I'm which a is massive uh, fan. NWA. Yes. And Crawley, of course, isn't, by anyone's touch of imagination, it isn't Compton, is it? I've been there. You've no. been to Crawley or yeah, Compton? Yeah, I've been to Crawley, yeah. Crawley. You've been to Crawley? Yeah, I have, yeah. <laughs> Crawley, that's unusual. Dude, but you... I can't imagine what they make. It's like seeing a unicorn, you in Crawley. <laughs> <laughs> because Crawley, most of us know it as a stop on the way to Gatwick. I mean, that's kind of normally... Oh, that's how I've heard of it. Yes. <laughs> OK, OK. It's this where they park like... the cars for Gatwick. <laughs> oh, OK. That's right, isn't it? I didn't expect to experience this kind of racism. <laughs> 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 I'm sure it's a lovely place. I've never been there. Is it? And you, you, you're still very fond of it. You, you go there a lot. Uh, well, I live there. You still live in Crawley? Yeah. I wow, sort of, you're not I doing sort of... as well as I thought. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, weirdly... Well... <laughs> Thank you. No, listen, that's not fair. I occasionally go to Horsham. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um... I do like it. I, I, it's, I've just become. I've sort well, you of grew up there. Like, yeah, and so my mum's not going to let. My, look, my mum lives in Crawley. And your mum seems wonderful. She seems wonderful. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen her on your shows a lot. She is what I call a flamethrower to my self-esteem. <laughs> that is what I would describe my mum. How was she when that. you were growing up? Was she uh, was she one of those loving, nurturing mothers who protected you from the grim realities of life? Uh, it's one way of describing it. I mean, I, I, what I would say is she would detect whenever I was feeling good about myself and then shit all over that. <laughs> so, so, one of the things it was... I don't, no, my mum's very supportive, but Sri Lankan mums are very honest. And my mum was a feed... My mum would feed me loads, but then have a go at me for being overweight. It was just sort of this... <laughs> she, like, she used to, um... She used to give me, uh, jam sandwiches for... Not for lunch, for break. Just sort of <laughs> midway through the... Sort of about 10.30, you think, I need to smash for eight rounds of sandwiches. Do you know what I mean? That was how my mum... That mum saw it. And then, um, the school became concerned, because, like, this... <laughs> this tubby, brown blancmange of a child is sort of... <laughs> sitting there, Blamondre. just... Couldn't even go out, cos he hasn't got time to finish all of the food he's been given. <laughs> And so I was, like, slamming through these sandwiches. So the school phoned... I can imagine this, they phoned my mum and said, your son is a fat prick. Like, you need to... <laughs> you need to do something about this, right? He is out of control. <laughs> and she told me to hide when I was eating my sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs>
I, let me just say this for the record. I'm not happy about what's happened with that woman. You know, yeah. Like, <laughs> get, putting her on TV is one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made. And now... <laughs> she my... was very good on TV. I yeah. Mean, she was and, very good with you. Yeah, she was fine, but I'm, I'm hoping that that stops <laughs> and, I will, and I will do whatever it takes, even that means getting her deported. Like, yeah. I, I, literally, <laughs> I don't care, man. It's out of control. I mean, you talk about her a lot in the book. The book is very funny. I can't recommend it highly enough. But you also talk a lot about kind of like... Very, I was surprised at how personal it was, where you talk about things in your life that, like, your, your father, yeah. who, who left your family for a while and was yeah. with someone else, and yeah. that seems like a, that was an uncomfortable period, I imagine. Yeah, it was. I mean, I, when I started writing the book, I was sort of thinking, I'm going to write a funny book, you know, I want to write a funny book. That is... Wow. That photo <laughs> wow. is... Um, but I, was, I, I just sort of wanted to write a funny book. But then, I was sort of thinking, I want to write a book that's, that sort of explains my journey or whatever, for want of a better word, to, to where... And, that period of my life, you know, my dad, uh, my mum and dad had problems. My dad went to prison. You know, we got our, you know, we got our house repossessed, and there's all these sort of struggles. And I thought, well, you know, that is a that was a dark period in our lives. But it, I think I just thought I put it in because I, I genuinely don't think I would have ended up being a comedian had I not gone through that. And what about your wife? Did she read the book? Is she? Because my talk... wife could not give less of a shit about anything. <laughs> <I did. laughs> Listen, I did... I... I honestly... <laughs> let me give you an example, right? Please I used to try material out. Like, when I started when doing stand When you were stand, starting out When I was starting out, yeah. I'd try material. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, say, I'd, try, I'd try a bit of material. I'd go, I've got this idea, what do you think about this? And she'd go, the best thing that she's ever said to me is, the most positive thing, I'm sure the people that like you would like that. <laughs> that that's... <laughs> that's literally... I did a, a series, Asian Provocateur, right? Yeah. It was like, I thought, a huge success for me, like a big show. That was what made my mum into the unfortunate star that she's yeah. become. <laughs> Lisa has not even watched it. Wow. She, she's not watched an episode of it. And why is she not watching it? Why because you... she's a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amir, she'll be pleased to know, he's not just doing comedy, and we see him on comedy panel shows sometimes, but also you've got a sitcom coming up. Yes, And yeah. that's kind of autobiographical, or semi-autobiographical, this, this, uh, this project yeah, as well. Yeah, it's um, called The Reluctant Landlord. Basically, my dad, he ran this book export company. My dad was a bit of a, like, a, a bit of a party animal. He's so... like a Del Boy kind of character. Yeah, right? he, he was, yeah. 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 yeah, he was, yeah. Brown Del Boy, yeah, he was. <laughs> so he, um, so he, ran, he basically ran a book export company. It was, in, it was in London, we lived in Crawley. So he, got, so he took it over. He got fed up with the commute, so he brought the book export company to Crawley, near Crawley, and then on his lunch break, he would go to this pub for lunch. And then he said to me, well, he came back to, to my mum one day, and he said, do you know something? I realised I have much more fun during lunch <laughs> than I do during the working day. <laughs> so he sold the company and bought the pub. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so he bought this pub and then passed away. So then we had this pub. So the sitcom is basically this guy that's running this so pub. So it's kind of what really happened. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, in truth, we gave up the pub after a few months. Fairly quickly, But, yeah. I, but we... I sort of lived the pub life for, like, 15 years or so. Uh, so growing up in Crawley, uh, a young... Uh, we've established fairly uh, well-padded Sri Lankan child. Wow! <laughs> you said that. I yeah. Think, yeah. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I mean, no, one, I saw, one I... can't help but think that you face some challenges. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at that picture. Come on. Come on. This is not, that's the type of photo that you see. If I'd gone missing, and then the, <laughs> and then, and then the caption underneath says, he wasn't a popular boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then you develop this love of hip-hop. You're yes. a big, big, massive hip-hop fan. I am, yeah. Uh, oh. And so, uh, were there other hip-hop fans in Crawley? Did, did you, were there a lot of you, or did you form a small group of hip-hop enthusiasts? Uh, I was in... I tried to... We tried to form a little... There's, like, three of us <laughs> that were into hip-hop, and I started, like... We started trying to, find, like, form a band. We formed a little rap crew What was called, the name of your crew? Uh, First Conviction. And <laughs> my uh, MC name was uh, Ranga, the Lazy-Eyed Assassin. And, and, and we was... <laughs> It's a kid out of Crawley just trying to make his way. Yeah. I'm not going to ask you to uh, spit any bars. Yeah. But I am going to ask you, what were the titles of your of the self-penned... Uh, were they raps or were they songs? What did you create? I sort of just did, like, 
Uh, I did one called Rotten Like Dot Cotton. <laughs> Surprisingly not here. <laughs> <laughs> what lap dot cotton? Come on, give us a verse from that. Come on, give us a verse. How did that begin? You've got to. Uh, <laughs> I come rotten, I smacking <laughs> dot cotton on the bottom. My style is super memorable, your style is super forgotten. It's not on, I rock on. Any track I drop on, scary like a prisoner about to strap his cock on. <laughs> well, I think I hit. I mean, I think I hit. Bring that out now, that's a hit. Yeah, yeah. Ramesh, it's so great to have you on the show. Uh, he's a brilliant comedian. The book is very, very funny. It's out right now. Ramesh Ranganathan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Smash it.